I'm wondering what uh, NFL scouts are asking you about Jason Oa, and as somebody who's coached at that level, what are you able to project to them? Because there's obviously a lot of questions about his experience and that sort of thing. Thank you. Well, you know, um, I, you're, you're right. Quite a few scouts have have called, and um, and D line coaches and outside line backer coaches have called, and uh, and uh, they're asking, you know, what do I feel like this guy's ceiling is? Um, how does he learn? And you know, my response to them is the same. I, I think Jason Oway has a uh, has an opportunity uh, to be a, a great player on the next level. He's got a big ceiling. You know, people um, sometimes forget last year was his first year starting here at Penn State, and uh, you know, you saw what he was able to do. Um, you know, from a from a number standpoint, with his pressures and how disruptive he was in the run game starting one year at Penn State. And so I tell him, I think he's got a super high ceiling. Uh, Jason is like a sponge, learning the game, uh, learning, you know, the ins and outs and the, and the small nuances of playing the uh, defensive end position. Um, so they, they want to know what, what I feel like his ceiling is, and I think is extremely high. And uh, how well does he, uh, how well does he learn? And, and Jason's a super smart guy. You know, I was with him essentially seven and a half months, uh, and, and and he picked up things very, very well. So I think he'll be a sponge at the next level. I think he'll elevate his game even more, and uh, I think he'll be an extremely dominant pass rusher uh, on Sundays. And whoever picks him is getting one heck of a um, young man and one heck of a player with a super high ceiling. Go to Nubias Wilborn and Chief Frank. You're on deck. Hey, thanks for the time as always, sir. Um... Really appreciate it. I know, obviously, Coach D line, but what have you seen with Rashid since he has to go against you guys so often? What have you seen with his development over spring so far? Man, this guy, this guy has gotten uh, better. I thought Rashid was a really good player last year, and I think Rashid has a chance to be dominant. He's got really, really good feet. Uh, he, he reminds me of some of the uh, the tackles uh, that that we had with his foot quickness that we had with the Jets. You know. Uh, he, He's, he's super athletic, and I tell you what, Rashid has got a really, really good punch. Coach Troutwan has done an excellent job with him helping Rashid develop a strong punch. So uh, I, I'm super excited about him. I, I, I'm excited to see him work this fall. Go to T. Frank with PWI and Tyler Donahue. You're on deck. Hey, John. Nice to meet you. Uh, How you doing? I'm doing well. I, I, I think this is the first chance I've actually had to, to talk to you, and and, and I'm just curious when it comes to those things that you were teaching Jason and the things you're teaching Adisa and, and the guys that you have now, what are the biggest things that you preach when it comes to production in pass rushing? Like what are your attendance of the things that you want them to focus on and then translate to the field? Well, you know, just, just a couple of things we're always preaching. It always starts with your get off. You know, that ball is snap. You know, you want to have great get off. And then having a great solid rush plan. So, you know, for each of those guys, you know, like Jason, Jason w was so athletic. Jason could be a, a, an edge guy. Jason could be a power guy. You know, Jason could, you know, set a guy up outside and, 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 and spin or shake back and shake and rip back inside. So just having those guys develop a rush plan and based off your rush plan, uh, that's the move you have and have a counter off of that, you know. So, like those ends, you know, one of the things that, you know, Coach Barnes and I, Barnes and I, we work really hard with those ends are to, to understand and, and see the set that the offensive tackle is giving. And, you know, with great ball get off, you can see the set and that now you know what move you need to use or do you need to go to your counter. So I, I think when you can get that down and you understand the set you're getting, I think the game slows down for you because, you know, there's only a move or two that you can do versus certain sets. And so I think bringing that knowledge to those guys because when they go on to and play on Sundays, that's one of the things that we used to preach to the guys all the time, you know, uh, understanding the sets the uh, offensive line were giving you. You know, just because you might be a good edge guy, if that guy is kicking hard out every time, you know, you're not going to be able to get to edge. This guy's going to widen you out, so you got to have a counter based off, of the, uh, based off of his set. So I think the more you can break it down and, and you know, make it simplify – the O lines pass sets to them, and they get an understanding of that. I think you're in really good shape. Howard Donahue, Lions two four seven, and Joe Giuliano, you're on deck. Hi, John. Nice to see you again. 
How you doing, Tyler? Doing great, thank you. Um, if we could ask about those transfers now. It's our first time to do that with you, Eric and and um, Arnold coming in. Um, can you give us some early feedback and also looking back and bringing them into the program, why those guys were prioritized? Yeah, you know, I, I've been super um, excited and super pleased with both those young men. Uh, um, Arnold, we call him AK, has done a, a great job um, blending in um, the culture here, blending in the defensive line room. Uh, he's a he's a quiet guy, and, and, and uh, you might not hear him say anything, but, man, I tell you what, does he come to work. He comes to work every day, Tyler, with a smile. He works his butt off, and he is super, super uh, athletic and super talented. You know, we were very, very fortunate, and, uh, you know, we were able to beat some other high-level people to get his services. I, I'm so excited about him in Congo. And, you know, Congo's been the, the – the, uh, Derek's been the same – way coming into the program both of those guys have just fit really well in the d-line room they they come in and they live and breathe the culture here about working hard blue hat mentality and uh congo is is really quick he's played big time football down at duke he's played with some good guys and he has an understanding and the maturity about him that is going to allow us to uh to to be able to help our football team i'm so excited about them i don't know if we could have gotten um from a personality standpoint from a production standpoint uh any any better transfers than those two coming in here i'm i'm really glad they're on our football team joe giuliano philadelphia inquirer and bob flounders you're on deck well, good evening john good talking to you hey joe how are you good thank you um, I wanted to ask you about two guys from my neck of the woods. Uh, first of all, what have you seen in the development of Nick Tarburton, uh, both last season and in the spring? And I also wanted to know what you've been telling NFL scouts about Shaka Tony. All right. Well, we'll start with Nick. I tell you what, Nick is Nick has had a really good spring so far. It started with his uh, winter all season, just in there grinding, in there working, in there competing, and. Um, I've been pleased at where he is um, right now in the spring. I think I think Nick's got a chance to to help our football team and make plays. He's a super smart guy. Uh, he's always in the right spot. Uh, he'll he'll make the plays that he needs to make for our team. And I tell you what, you know, um, I value so much his leadership in our room. Nick Nick Tarburton is a really really good leader. The guys look up to him. He does things the right way. Um, you know, he works hard, and uh, I'm excited um, for Nick uh, going in through the rest of the spring and going into fall camp to see what he's going to be able to do for us. So I'm, look, I'm excited about him. And then your, the second part of your question is, you know, what, are the, what have I been telling the scouts about Shaka is, Shaka is a super, super smart football player. He, he, he's been one of the smartest uh, football players I've been around at that position. He was one of the guys that could tell you what all 11 was doing. Uh, he has a great knowledge and understanding of defenses. And um, I think he's multi-talented. You saw that with his pro day. You know, he, he was 245, I think. He ran a 4-5. You know, he, he can, Shaka can put his hand down and play nickel defensive end and rush off the edge, you know, uh, that, that's impressive. But he also could be a 3-4 outside linebacker and drop into coverage because of the way we play our ends. He understands the drops. He understands the coverages. You know, he had a, a great um, drop down in the senior bowl, I believe, that kind of went viral on, on Twitter when he was locking down a tight end. I mean, Shocker can do that, you know. Uh, he's got great quicks. And um, I think anybody that gets Shaka Tony uh, on their football team um, from a knowledge wise, you're going to be able to do a lot of things with him. And I, I think you can be really creative with him. You can rush Shaka off the edge. You can drop Shaka in the coverage, and he's going to be able to do it, do the job, not just do the job. He's going to be able to do it well. So I, I think you're, you're getting a high IQ football player uh, with Shaka Tony on your football team. Bob Flounders, uh, Penn Live, Mark Brennan, you're on deck. Hi, John. How are you today? How are you doing today, man? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. John, I wanted to ask you about a couple of your inside players at tackle. With P.J. living at the, in the 325-pound range now, looks like he really bulked up. Do you feel like he can help you at both tackle spots now instead of maybe just one? And then Hakeem Beeman, 
looks like he went the other way, according to the uh, the roster. He's he's closer to 270 now. Was that by design as well? And what have you seen from him? Well, you know, I'll start with PJ. I, I tell you what, he, he has bucked up, and I tell you what, he's moving really, really well. Uh, he, he PJ is going to be a stout guy in there. And you know, in this league, when people try to big boy you and things like that, uh, we're going to be able to hold up at the point of contact. And he's also nimble enough to, to make plays and things with his feet. So I've been really impressed with uh, with PJ. And he's working on all the little things and all the little minute details of, of, of the techniques. And I tell you what, I, I think it's going to pay off for him. I, I like the way that the, he is moving. I like the way he's working. And I like the way he is leading. So I'm excited about it. I mean, he, he's been really good uh, with, with him bulking up. And then on the other side of that, uh, Hakeem Beeman, I think has you know has a chance to be really really good for us as well too. You know, you you look at the the, the players. You know, Hakeem's a little bit different from PJ because Hakeem. You know, the thing I we love about him, Hakeem brings some in like qualities in there. He he can do that. I'm not sure why all the lights are cutting off. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Hang on. There we go. Sorry about that. They automatically shut off. But, um, you know, he brings in some, you know, some end type qualities with his footwork and, and mobility. So, you know, you know, we, we want Hakeem to continue to grow and, and getting bigger and stronger. But I, I like what he brings to our, our football team. I think I think he's got a chance to be really, really good, you know, and, and he's off to having a really nice spring as well. Excited about him. We're going to Mark Brennan a few more. We'll put a Mark Brennan fight on state. Audrey Snyder, you're on deck. John, following up on what Bob said, I wanted to ask you about two of your uh, 2020 tackles, uh, Moba and Brevard. Uh, they certainly passed the look test. How are they coming along as players, and where do you see them kind of fitting in? Well, you know, I'll start with uh, Moba. You know, I was talking with uh, Coach Pry, and uh, he's been one of the, the, the young tackles that I feel like is just improving steadily, you know, uh, with his footwork. Uh, he made a play on, on Monday that was just really impressive. He was doing his job and and seeing him, you know, be quick uh, with his footwork. So I really like the way he's trending right now. Um, he's just, you know, he's a young guy, so he's still learning the game. But I I, I, I have been very impressed with him, uh, you know, the, the, in the first few practices uh, uh, this week of, uh, of what he's what he's doing and how he's maturing. I, I really like him. And, and the same with Cole, you know. Uh, we're, I'm seeing flashes out of both those kids that I didn't see uh, in the fall. With both of those kids, they're already um, better than they were in the fall. And you see the growth, and you're starting to see these, some things are starting to seek in, and you're starting to see these kids or, or young men um, trend in the right direction. So I, I'm excited about these young guys. we got time for two more questions. Audrey Snyder, followed by Nate Bauer. Hey, John. Um, Two-part question for you. What, what are you guys calling uh, Derek Cangelo? What's his nickname, and how did he get that? And then um, what can you tell us kind of about your depth at defensive end, especially Zariah Fisher and his transition there? Okay. Um, we, you know, Derek's nickname is Congo. And, uh, you know, he, <laughs> that's what he wants to call us. You know, it has something to do, from, uh, do with where he's from. And, um, you know, as far as Zariah, uh, I've been really pleased uh, with Zariah. You know, coming over, he's got really good athleticism. Um, he, he's learning the position, learning how to play defensive end. But he has all the physical tools uh, that we want at our defensive ends. I, I think he's going to be a really good player. And, uh, you know, he's learning uh, the uh, the defense uh, and how to play a defensive end. I, I've been pleased with him. I think he's going to be a really, really good player for us. He's doing a really nice job. Last question. We'll go to Nate Bauer. Hey, one, one more uh, at end for you. Um, Smith Vilbert's role expanded a little bit down the stretch last year. How, how would you assess um, how he looked down the stretch last year and, and his progression through the offseason? You know, well, he's one of the guys, I'm glad you asked me that question, super excited about him. Just where he was last year playing in those last games, um, he's already pushed way past that, in my opinion. Smith Gilbert has the high ceiling. Um, he's continuing to learn the position of defensive end, but I tell you what, man, that young man is flashing, and you see him making some plays, 
Um, he, he's been, he's getting more mature at the position. Um, you know, he's just he's learning how to be a really really quality, um, good defensive end in the Big Ten. You know, he had two examples last year of two high production defensive ends, and you know. Um, those guys weren't productive because of their talent. They were productive on how they worked, how they practiced, their understanding of the defense. And now you see him starting to do that and understand some things. And now the game is slowing down for him, which is a good thing. So super excited, Nate, about him and his ceiling. 